Hello, hello, my slimes. Welcome back to the middle lane. We're playing some Vigar mid. I think Vigar at the moment is like one of the strongest mid laners for low armor Mars. He has been for a while, but I still think people kind of don't fully grasp how to play him at the lower end of the ladder. So I do want to show how I would play Vigar at the lower end of the ladder. The way I'm going to play this game is I am not going to play very aggressively. I'm going to restrain myself and try to simulate an actual low elo game where you are not going to be confident or cocky enough to trade very aggressively on Vagar and you're not going to be able to find those timers. And I'm just going to play the lane slowly, I'm not going to do anything crazy, I'm just going to farm my Q stacks and then when we get into the mid game I'm going to show you guys that you can navigate the mid game without having a crazy lead in the laning phase which I usually get in smurf commentaries and still win the game by just playing mid game well and doing well in fights. That is what I want to showcase. Vagar by the way, the reason I'm playing him out of the top 10 mid laners that are like highest win rate uh, below gold, Vygar is the only one that's like not a 1% pick rate. He's like 10% pick rate. Everything else is like 1%. So the way I'm going to play this, I'm just going to go for CS. I'm not even going to push. Generally speaking, what you would want to do here as Vygar is you would want to tr start like creating a push. Because once you start creating that push, you can start queuing the enemy champion, right? But I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to go for Qs and play for my last hits. Just gonna play for last hits. If the enemy Malsahar walks up, I will hit him with a Q. But outside of that, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. He walked up, I hit him with a Q. The way you should be playing this is you should be hitting the wave and you should always be trying to go for that early game push. Miss the Q, common early or low elo Vigar thing to do, right? Just go line myself up for this Q as well. Miss it as well, classic. Maybe I'm not that good on Vigar anymore, huh? I used to be the highest rated Vigar in North America at the very least. When I played on the NA server, line up this minion. So Malsahar should generally, he should never really be able to push you in right, but you know what, how it goes. We're playing slowly, so. Looks like these minions didn't want to really line up. You should also always prioritize hitting uh, stacks over trying to aim for the enemy champion, but uh, yeah, sometimes you uh, miss your spells and you want to go for a little bit of an ambitious play. Line up these minions. So the only thing I'm really going to focus on is not hitting the enemy champion, but just lining up minions as such. Missed that as well. That sucks. I like doing double points in Q uh, when I'm in these control mage matchups. So I will just do that. Looks like I'm going to miss the cannon. Uh, it's, it's, all just, it's all just in the spirit of low elo. That's why I missed that cannon. Yep. Use my Q on his little minions. Auto his little minions as well. Now that was a bad Q. That might cost me quite a few minions. Let's see if I can line these up. Okay, we're just last hitting. At this point, Malsar stepped up a little bit far. I'm gonna try to cage him. Miss, that's fine. At this point you should... Oh, I have a fly on my nose. At this point you should probably start looking for a crash so you can take your base. But, I won't be doing that. I will just stay mid lane and farm my stacks. Stuff is happening around the map. My top lane is dying. I have no prio at all, but that's okay. See if I can land a Q. Nice. A gank? Okay, sure. I will cage. Nice. We got his flash. That's good. Be a bit careful. Be a bit careful. Thank you. Got his flash. Trunked him out. That's good. I'll pop my potion and just line up my stacks. Not gonna do anything crazy. Uh, again, you should use this a little bit more aggressively, this advantage. Well, we can for sure kill him. Nice, my Briar gets the kill. That's good as well. She will take the entire wave as well, I guess. I'm gonna walk down and then I'm just gonna base down here. No reason to take another wave. The wave already crashed. That's what we wanted. Malsahar is just going to teleport. That's fine by me. Wait, all the boots are more expensive now. I'm gonna buy some shoes. And I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna teleport mid lane as well. I think it makes sense. The wave here is coming into me as well, so I wanna catch all the minions. And we're just gonna keep doing nothing. So once you hit level 5, Vygar has this beautiful... Well, that's not annoying at all, 6 health. Vygar has this beautiful spike on level 5 where you can now QW the range minions as such. So you Or WQ them for stacks. And this is when you, generally speaking, will start pushing more on Vygar. So once you hit level 5, that's when you should just play away from the enemy champion and spam QWs on the wave like this. And you will just push every wave. Go for your last hits when you can. Throw some Qs, try to hit the enemy champion whenever you don't have to farm. But you can see how defensively I'm playing. I'm not playing very aggressively. 
I'm playing very, very far back considering that I have an advantage. And I'm not gonna try to trade with the mouse arrow. I'm just gonna sit back, QW the wave, call it a day. Or WQ the wave, not QW. Jesus Christ, QW would mean that I don't get stacks. But we're just WQ, get my minions, kill his little voidlings, try to get stacks off his little voidlings if possible. That's the absolute ideal. Get my stacks faster. And I'm just gonna try to get the minions. Malzara has level 6 now, but he is no flash. Ws, I'm just gonna queue to stack. But he will keep shoving me in, because I'm not gonna try to do anything, right? If you are playing this matchup, you should play it more aggressively as Vygar by trying to, like, snipe queues on the Malzahar. But, again, I'm trying to showcase something here. I'm trying to showcase that you can win the game just by doing this. Give a minion, that's fine. Try to not get uh, the E on us. My bot lane is winning. I only went for the minion there, by the way. I was not aiming for the Malzahar. Try to get my minions here. Someone pinked this. Is that Malzahar? Sure do hope it was Malzahar. If not, I'm dead. Ah, it was Malzahar. Fantastic. He could be basing here for Lost Chapter. But that's fine. We will just push out the wave. Like, we're just gonna be a complete NPC mid lane. And we're gonna let Malzahar just... Uh, make a mistake and then lose the game off that, or lose the lane off that. We're not doing anything crazy. We're still up 10 CS because of that one gang, which is nice. We're gonna get, oh, Malzahar's bot lane. I will stay mid lane then. He gets the shutdown, well played to him. We want to make sure that he bleeds off of that. My Briar is doing Drake. If I have to, I will move for it, but I would prefer not to. So I'm assuming Malzahar ulted. Again, under normal circumstances, that should be like a go sign. That should mean play aggressive. In these circumstances, not really though, right? We'll just take this wave and then we'll go for our base. Actually, we could stay for another wave. It would be greedy, but I think I have enough mana to work with here. To just shove out the wave. But so does Malzahar, right? Ah, this might actually prove to have been a mistake to stay. That one extra wave. I didn't really deny him anything. And instead, now he gets a better base than me. So... Uh, yeah, that was completely intentional to showcase that uh, sometimes you uh, take a bad base in silver. Yep, that's what happened there. So we only have a 9 CS advantage on him here. Malzar is good, he could be running bot lane again. He's not. Just staying mid lane. We're just gonna grab our Archangels here. But when we have enough gold for it at least. But until then I'm gonna be running mid lane. I also am running um, Relentless Hunter, which is nice. These are the runes I'm running. I'm sorry I didn't show them earlier. My bad, fellas. I know that some of you like seeing them. Um, I think movement speed is kind of the most important stat on Vygar to catch people with your cage. That's why you'll see me running this. Shove out the wave. Ah, oh, Malzahar is out of mana. But we can't trade with the Malzahar. Two points in Q, very, very, or W, very, very important. Now, here your goal should be to try to trap the Malzahar in lane. And the way you're going to try to do that is just by pushing him under tower. The reason being is Malzahar is very low on mana, which means he can't really get priority in the lane. He's out of mana completely. So I'm just gonna shove the wave, and then when the wave is fully shoved, I can like try to hit the Malzahar a little bit. Push him under tower and just try to take plates and hit him a little bit. This is one of those moments where now, I should be so much stronger, like obviously, that lower MMR players can see that this is like a massive advantage as well, is what I would like to believe. We just want our stacks off of these minions. You can see we're stacking quite well, actually. We're 100 stacks at 9 minutes. That's pretty good. But Malzahar made a pretty big mistake here. And we're going to try to use that by just firing some cages underneath the tower. And keeping him trapped in lane. He should be taking his base at some point. Because otherwise he will be sitting under tower the entire game. So shove out the wave. Just keep pushing the wave, and then when I've killed the entire wave, then I'll allow myself to trade with the Malzahar. Till then, I'm just getting stacks. That's all I want to do. Get stacks. Malzahar walks up too far, I'll cage him. Throw a Q at him. Uh, he is dead to a Q flash alt auto here, by the way. But I'm not gonna do it. But understand that he is dead here. Cancel his base again. Even though I lose 200 health for that, absolutely worth it. The longer I can keep Malzahar trapped in mid lane, the better. Because I'm winning right now. Malsa, you can see he's bleeding. He's losing plates, he's losing CS, he's losing priority, but he's not punishing me. All in all, a bad time for the Malsahar. And I will get plates. 
Senna even has to come mid lane to save him. And we'll just sit back. Now we're not gonna do anything. Someone else showed up in the lane? That's fine. We will do nothing. He has teleport now, so probably just shove out this wave and then look for my base as well. Wait, you shove out the wave. Maybe I can cancel it again, actually. No, not quite. He will TP mid lane here. I could greed for this plate. I think I... No. Okay, never mind. Brand came mid lane. Please don't cancel my base. That sucks. But I will just base and teleport as well. It's kind of how it goes. He has item. I will have item as well. But he will get one wave of priority off of that. He has Leandris. No mana? Alright. Okay. I mean, the way you would approach this then is you would try to attack his mana pool as much as possible. I will go... Uh... Oh, he gets a plate. Oh, that sucks. I will go CDR boots. I think this game, correct boots would be Merc Treads because the enemy is playing AP mid jungle. Generally speaking, when the enemy plays AP mid jungle, want to go Merc Treads. Looks like some stuff is happening up here, so I'll just run up. Okay. My Briar is Omega fed, I suppose. Where's Malsahar? Probably running bot lane, right? Oh no, he's trying to kill my Briar. Well, I will run over them. Save the Briar! She's dead. Absolutely dead. Well, three points in W is the general rule, I think. Unless you're stacking very well, then you can do two points. But we're gonna try to keep the Malsar under tower. And we're just gonna fire spells. Try to get stacks. That's all we're gonna do. We can push the wave faster than he can, so we're gonna do it like this. Uh, assuming he can't access the wave. This point, I'm kind of okay using... Okay, there's a Kai'Sa mid lane for some reason. Not sure what that's all about. But sure. I mean, you can see we're stacking very, very well. At this point, I think I'm more willing to use W to kill his Voidlings to try to get priority. But you can see, up 20 CS on him. And we're stacking insanely well. Malasar also scales very well, keep that in mind. So, both of us are kind of like in spots where we want to be in here, probably. So, I'm a bit more willing to just use W to kill his Voidlings now, because that means I get guaranteed priority. And with that guaranteed priority, I can kind of try to make his life a little bit miserable under the tower. As such. That's why we take Electrocute. My second Electrocute proc of the game. Looks like there's a Senna mid lane. If she gets hit by everything, she will die. But yeah, I mean... Top side is not looking good, so this might still be a close game. Senna is mid lane. I'm not gonna do anything. Hey, enemy champion showed up on my screen that's not the enemy laner? I sit back and I just throw Qs. I don't do anything crazy. Sit back, throw some Qs. Not gonna try to do anything crazy here. Could flash on the Senna, probably kill her. I think flash QR would kill her. Not gonna do that though. Just gonna stay mid lane and push. The fact that Nalsa has more mana than me is kind of funny. Because uh, he doesn't have a mana item. I have Archangels, which is almost fully stacked, but that's how it goes, right? Just keep throwing some Qs at him, he will keep dodging them. But we just have a 25 CS advantage and we haven't done anything crazy, we're just keeping the Malsar under tower. He's not having a very easy time this game either. I'd like to shove out this wave, and everyone on the enemy team is bot lane, so... Malsar shouldn't run bot lane either, because the play is already over. So I will just shove out this wave. Time Kench will be caught there. Not a lot we can do about that. I don't think we should be playing the dragon either. I don't even think I should be hitting this tower, to be honest. But I will anyway. Nothing we can do here. I'm kind of too low mana. So I will just take the tower instead. We will probably all die here, but I can't really benefit that fight at all. Now I can maybe help. But Briar is probably already dead. Caitlyn might die as well. In that case, we will just shove out this wave. If we shove out this wave, at least they don't get anything. That's something else that's important. Kills on their own are not that impactful if you can't get anything off the back of those kills. So if you're bleeding waves and losing towers while you're going for kills, kills are not that worth it, to be honest. We're gonna go death cap second. Basically always gonna go death cap second. It's just broken. Like, death cap works so well with your passive. Like... Don't get me wrong, we lose a dragon, which that's not great. We lost a shutdown as well, I think, which that also sucks. But we got a mid lane tower for it. We should also get a top lane tower if my Malphite ever decides to actually take it. Oh, now this could get a bit ugly, because they might be able to break bot tower off of this. But I will run down. 
I think this is a good play to join, so we will just do this. Miss every single spell, but we will just auto-attack her. I mean, this was horribly played by me, I can't lie. But as long as I get my cage down, I will happily take my death like a champ. And she hits as well, fantastic. So I missed my cage, I missed my W, I missed my Q. And then I walked into the brand stun. Not a great display of mechanics, I must admit. Kind of a pretty poor display of mechanics. But it it worked. I could teleport bot lane here. It's a kind of a funny play to do. I don't think I will. I think I will just run top lane to catch the wave because there's a play around Herald. But teleporting bot lane here is a pretty funny play to do. Mostly because the way it works is you could TP bot lane here and then pressure this tier 2. And tier 2s are worth 700 gold. So if you actually get that tier 2, it's worth the same amount as 2 kills, right? Which is pretty crazy to think about. But it's like one of those things you can use teleport for. That a lot of people don't really realize. Try to get vision on the Malsar. Again, we're not trying to do anything crazy on the Malsar. We're just trying to catch side lanes here. To showcase that you get resources, you win games. Malsar could be trapping here. I think more than all likelihood he's coming down to my team. And he's trying to get them from behind. You know what I'm saying, bro? Uh, looks like my teammates are winning there. But I do still want to save them from Malsahar. So I'm going to stand up here. There's a Malsahar here, fellas. You just need to be aware of that. Would have preferred that my Malphite didn't take that blast comb. I would also prefer that my Malphite ran bot lane. But looks like he's not going to do that. Yeah, I mean, this is why I would have liked the blast cone to be alive. Maybe we can trap him. Just ult him. He should be dead, bro. I don't even want to ult that. Nice. We can go for the Yorick afterwards. Just need to play it a bit slowly. I mean, I'm hitting my spells, but... Uh, I don't know if I have damage to kill him, to be honest. Malphite is coming up. Maybe the slow will be enough for me to line up more spells. Mm, I could flash on him, but I don't think it's worth it. Mm. People are dying. Th this is kind of like the oink stage of the game now. This is where like a lot of people get absorbed into the oink. What I want you to focus on here is don't get, don't get sucked into the oinking. I, I understand how easy it is to oink. And it don't get me wrong, like oinking is fun because you're just perma oinking and fighting. But the way to win the games is just by getting resources and taking waves. And then after you've taken the wave, then you can go do stuff. For example here. Realistically, I should run up here and help the boys. But instead, I'm going to stay mid lane and just get the, get the resources. And then I'm going to go help the boys afterwards. Now I don't mind running up here. And now we have priority. Now I can go get vision in the enemy jungle. I can go pretend to be annoying to the mouse tower who's going to show up right here. Or who's on this blue buff. Or neither. <laughs> Get me out of there. That fella is scary. We can probably kill him though. He's no shield. Oh, I missed. Ah, I'll just press press alt on him. That's what I wanted to do. Kai says bot lane. Well, let's just base and run bot lane then, shall we? Mid lane tower should be guaranteed. I have death cap as well. You don't need to base, by the way. You're fine. Oh, he based anyway. They're teleporting bot lane. What a crazy play. Is that, uh, that's Yorick. Well, I will just run bot lane. I have death cap. I think Crypt Bloom makes sense next. I mean, I will just one-shot you. If you're not careful, boss. But I mean, I can also just miss everything. Don't really want to waste my ult. Don't get the kill, that's fine. Now where can we get resources? Look at the map. Don't oink. Don't oink and go down to this wave. Don't do- I know you want to do it. Don't do it. Don't oink. Because someone is already taking this wave. Mid wave. Oh, that looks good. There's some mid wave. Oh, let's push out mid lane then. And then we can maybe transition that to a top lane play. Now, don't get me... Like, Caitlyn should be bot lane here. Because she ran bot lane. She wanted to oink some, some stuff bot lane here. But we're going to push that out. And then we're just going to take control over where we want to play around. What do we want to play around? We want to play around the dragon. Okay, we're going to take control over this bot side then. Then we're going to see if we can land the cage. This guy is dead. Goodbye. Don't need to do anything crazy. We just walk into, push wave, walk into enemy jungle. Nice. Look at how far ahead we are in CS. Have I done anything absurd this game? Have I stomped my lane? Have I done anything crazy? No. I've just taken wave, get gold, win game. Now don't, I mean, my bot lane is also winning, which that's just awesome. But my top lane is getting absolutely blasted. And they're still oinking, by the way. They're still inting. So it's not like, 
It's something crazy. Like, even if they were losing, we would be completely fine. See if we can save the Kench here, because there's nothing else for us to do on the map. Looks like he will flash out. That's fine. We'll then look at the map. Resources. Where do I need to defend? Is there anywhere I need to defend? Is there anywhere I can get resources? Just poke him a little bit. I'm not trying to kill him. I could kill him there if I wanted to waste my flash to flash ult him. Don't think it's worth it. So instead, we will just go mid lane. Defend the tower. Miss the cannon minion. Again! Malphite is flying out. I could flash altar. Would be a very funny play, wouldn't it? I'm not gonna do it. Someone is on this. I just heard like a loud ass sound. I mean, Yorick will die. Yeah, I mean, I don't even have to ult him. Look at how strong I am. I'm one-shotting the enemy team. One-shotting the enemy frontline. I'm not getting a, an absurd amount of kills. Oh, the Kaiser is dead as well. Dead as well. Enemy team just fell apart like that. Now we can Baron. Hey, I would like to go Baron, fellas. I promise you it's good. This is kind of what I hate about low elo. They hate going Baron. If no one spam, if I didn't spam ping Baron there, I don't think we would go Baron there. But three people are dead on the enemy team. And Baron is so overpowered. It gives you so much experience. For lower MMRs, you're not really going to be using the Baron buff that well to get towers on the map and to get priority and really bleed the enemy and balloon the goal lead. That's usually not what happens. But the Baron gives a ton of XP and the Baron gives you a lot of gold as well. So that's why it's so strong at lower MMRs. At higher MMRs, it's strong because, well, you take Baron, you basically secure all inner towers with a Baron, which, like I said earlier, inner towers are worth like 600 gold. So they're worth a lot of gold. I want to push this wave and then take my base. Need to make sure I'm not getting ganked. Mostly because... Not quite enough for Crypt Bloom. I can sell my Dorans. The reason for Crypt Bloom on Vygar, by the way, even though the enemy is no magic resist, is, well, they have base magic resist, and Vygar has so much burst that magic resist is, or magic pen is quite good because you do a lot of damage, right? Um, and Crypt Bloom, just an absolutely massive heal on Vygar. Oh, it looks like I need to teleport because we have a fight here. I could teleport to this, would probably be a bit smarter. But we're just gonna teleport and we're gonna see how we can play this. Okay, maybe I can kill the brand. Miss my spells. Okay, we will just play it a bit slowly. Throw my spells down. Yeah, and we win the fight, even though everyone was kind of dead at the start. We just played the fight slowly. And then we hit our spells. And then eventually we got a massive crypt loom. We healed ourselves for 300. I'm pretty sure we can end the game here as well, by the way. Depends if Malzahar based. If he based, we can't. If he ran back a herald? Sure, man. I need to take his shield. I did take his shield. And then I need to hit the, my spells on him. How funny is it that I can get two Ws off on him? How funny is that? And then here we can just end the game pretty cleanly. Nice game. Really nice game. Good line. Oh, exhaust! I've been outplayed! Save me! Okay, maybe, well... Sometimes you do a little bit of trolling and you don't end the game. But surely, surely, right, nothing bad will happen here. Nothing bad could possibly happen off the back end of that. Uh, correct thing to do here is probably to build something like a force of nature. Movement speed. I have enough damage to one-shot anyone on the enemy team. Movement speed is a valuable stat on Vygar. So winged moonplate is very good. Like I said earlier, movement speed, your most important stat. Why is movement speed your most important stat? Because, well, that's how you take people, put people in cage. Put people in cage, press W on people. W hit people, people die, you know? And the thing about it is people died. So that's why, uh, that's why you would go movement speed. Deadman's Plate would be ideal against a full AD team composition, but the only ADs the enemy team has is realistically the Senna. Kaisa does a lot of magic damage with her passive, her static shift, and she's also going to be moving into a Nashor's Tooth here, I would imagine. And they have AP mid jungle as well. So you can imagine Merc Treads here alongside this, um, alongside a, a Force of Nature, and you can imagine how tanky I would be. I can throw my cage on this guy. If I hit my spells, he's dead. The thing about it is his, uh, his little minions are blocking it. Wow, boom. Send that, you absolute bastard. That sucks. But we're just going to play for the Drake. We don't need to play for the Drake. We can just walk down mid lane and end the game. But we're going to play for the Drake. Which is fine. So we're trying to seize control over the enemy bot side here. That's what we're doing. 
You need to be a bit careful, Mr. Malphite. Can't lie. My Q doesn't one-shot his little... That's crazy. Yeah, Malphite kind of just went in. No reason to do that, to be honest. But I do... <gasps> it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's fine. Like, I don't even care anymore. I didn't even want that cannon. Now, I think, play for bot side. Yorick teleported bot side. We can try to kill that guy. Because he's quite far out, and we have control over their bot side jungle. This is why taking control over the jungle is so important. It seizes you the first move. Here, actually, I think I can maybe trap the brand if he tries to do anything crazy. No, oh, okay. Electrocute should kill. Crypt Bloom, heal me. Senna dies as well. I mean, we could just walk mid and end here, right? I think I'm just gonna... I'm gonna do the funny. I'm gonna do the funny here. Enemy team is not expecting this. <laughs> Yo, guys! Yo, your base! Yo, Masahar, the base! Defend it, bro! Uh, that's, that's a very funny way to end the game. <laughs> what a funny way to end the game. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. But you can see, highest damage in the game. By quite a wide margin as well, by the way. And I didn't do anything early game. I didn't punish the mouse. I didn't kill the mouse. I didn't do anything to like brute, brute force trades against him, which I could do to win even harder. I just sat back, did nothing, got my stacks, got my level nine, press WQ on the wave, had permanent priority, and then just won the game. Had highest damage in the game, I carried. You could say my Caitlyn got nine kills, cool. I had 10,000 damage more than her. I was 10 times more useful, basically. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed and have a good one. See ya.